and is a published author, speaker, and instructor for the University of Illinois Springfield. She has co-authored a study that developed an educational cost index for Illinois public schools and presented this in the American Society for Public Administration in the National Tax Association and has worked for the Illinois, Illinois State for nearly 25 years before joining the Illinois Department of Transportation, IDOT, and served as the Chief Fiscal Officer for the Illinois Department of Natural Resources, was Budget Operations Director at the Governor's Office of Management and Budget, and was Assistant State Controller for the Fiscal Policy, and was also been the Fiscal Advisor to the Democratic Leaders of the General Assembly, Assistant Director for Fiscal Affairs for the Board of Higher Education, and the Chief of the Revenue Unit at the former Economic and Physical Commission, and began working with IDOC in November of 2005 as the Director and Chief Fiscal Officer of the Office of Finance and Administration, in which she oversaw the multi-million dollar IDOC operation budget and the multi-billion dollar capital budget. In August of 2010, she was appointed Chief Operation Officer uh, in the Secretary's Office, where she was represented she was responsible for six offices and four divisions of IDOC and functioned as the liaison with the Governor's Office in the Illinois General Assembly. On October 24th in 2011, Governor Pat Quinn appointed Ann Schneider, Secretary of the Illinois Department of Transportation, overseeing a workforce of over 5,200 employees with oversight of more than $2.5 billion in capital projects on May 30th. 2013, and executive appointment was confirmed by the Illinois State for the second term. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ann Schneider. Thank you very much. It is really, truly an honor for me to be here today. Um, it, it is like serendipity, I think, because it, so much has happened over the last two weeks that I'm happy to be here to talk about today. I mean, it just it worked, the timing worked out really well, and so um, I think we have some good news to share. You've probably all read about it and heard about it, and I'll talk about it later um, in, when I talk to you um, throughout the day here. Um, the South Suburban Airport, we finally have a path forward. I'm so excited about that. And now, I, like I said, I'll get to that later in my remarks. Um, but I think with what's going to happen there and what, what we're doing on the Ileana Expressway and what's going on with the Joliet Bolton Mobile Center um, in the downtown area is just a microcosm of what's happening statewide. And it's something exciting to, to really see evolve here in Joliet and the Will County region. But I wanted to start by t telling you a little bit about the state's transportation system. Um, as business owners, you probably understand and appreciate the fact that transportation is what helps us uh, be economically competitive and viable. Uh, it's what we do use to transport our goods, what we use to get the inputs into our processes into where they need to be. Transportation is the underlying foundation of our state's economy. And just to give you a sense of what that system looks like here in Illinois, we have 140,000 miles of roads and 26,000 bridges here in Illinois. We have 16,000 miles of road on the state system alone. So if you think about that, 140,000 miles of roads, 16,000 on the state system, that means there's an awful lot of roads also on our local system. And our local system is also extremely important to the, how the entire system functions. And uh, when we talk about funding challenges, I think we need to keep that in mind. We also are responsible at IDOT for 8,000 of the 26,000 bridges that are in the state. Um, bridges, as we've seen in the news lately, are critically important um, not only to connect our communities, but also for the movement of goods. And, and if those bridges are not in good condition, or if they're what they call in the engineering industry fracture critical, which means if only one component fails, the whole bridge fails. See, you guys, I learned something. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, it, 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 it really comes to light how important those bridges are to our system. But also here in Illinois, we have 130 public, private, and private airports statewide providing um, some type of air service. 
And that is a critical part of what we do. We have a lot of cargo that moves through our airports. And I'm gonna talk a lot, of, I'm gonna refer back a lot to freight when I talk to you today. I think freight uh, movement here in Illinois is becoming more and more important to us. And I think it is part of our economic future here in Illinois to have a freight system that is connected and that there are no gaps and that we ensure the efficient movement of goods through our uh, state. We also have 52 public transit providers. And when I came to the Department of Transportation, I really only thought about transit being those major transit systems like up in Northeastern Illinois, also in the Metro East, um, down around St. Louis. But I found out that really an important part of the transit system are our rural transit providers. And um, if you don't know this, rural transit providers are that critical link to basic life services to people that live in rural areas that may not have access to a vehicle. So we're talking to the elderly, we're talking to the disabled. And so transit does play a very important role in our transportation system, which is also about moving people to where they need to be. We also have 1,100 miles of navigable waterways here in Illinois. And I think here in Joliet, you understand and appreciate the importance of those waterways. But that, those navigable waterways are really important to some key industries in this state. They're, it's important to our agricultural industry, number one, and that's huge. It's also important to our coal industry and our petroleum industry, as those navigable waterways is what connects those industries and others to the global marketplace. And if that system, for some reason, fails to function, as we've seen with flooding and last year with droughts, that creates problems for the entire system of transportation, but it has an even bigger impact on our producers and on the haulers. So the, the navigable waterways is something we're starting to focus more on at the Department of Transportation and really taking a close look and trying to work with uh, our federal partners at the Army Corps of Engineers and the Coast Guard to see if there's any role that the state can play to try to make sure that our navigable waterways are functional. We also have 7,300 miles of railroad tracks here in Illinois, and we have all seven Class One railroads that come through this state. And in this area, I think you all recognize the importance of that rail system because here um, you have some major intermodal facilities that are already in place, and you have some more that are getting ready to locate here. I think Bridgeport down. Um, along I-55 is, is getting ready to be built out. But why that's important is one-third of all of the uh, intermodal freight in the United States of America comes through Illinois. Forty percent of all, excuse me, 25 um, percent of all freight comes through Illinois. So it, it's really important to understand the significance of railroads in our transportation system. We are also, um, in terms of, of railroads, we are the first in the nation in terms of rail freight volume in the state of Illinois. We had over almost 500 million tons of freight that traveled through this state last year, and that ranks us number one in the country. And the reason I want to talk about that system and give you kind of a backdrop of what transportation is, because as I mentioned when I started talking, right here in Joliet and Will County, this is the hub of all of that. If you think about your transportation assets, there are a few places in the state of Illinois that can talk about this. You guys are the center of all of that rail activity. You guys have the east-west Interstate 80 traveling through the region, and you've got north-south routes with I-55 and I-57 nearby, and those things are critical links to marketplaces outside of Illinois for, for businesses, and we believe that this transportation system is something we need to continue to invest in. And I can tell you that Governor Quinn is committed to investments in our transportation system. Back in 2009, when the governor was first taking office, the country was going into the throes of that Great Recession, which we've all painfully lived through. And in many states, we had leadership that decided it was time to retrench, it was time to you know, cut the fat, trim down to the bone, and sometimes actually cut into the bone. But Governor Quinn took a different tact. He realized that this was an opportunity for the state of Illinois to provide investments in some of our critical infrastructure so that we would be positioned when the recession started ending. We would be positioned to compete even more so than our sister states in the global marketplace. And so 
The Illinois Jobs Now Capital Program, working with the members of the Illinois General Assembly, was passed, and that program provided $30 billion in investments in state's infrastructure. $20 billion of that money went for transportation investments, and, I, and I'm proud standing here today to tell you that to date we have invested $12.68 billion in our highway system, and that's been 5,436 <coughs> projects. We've improved 6,830 miles on that 16,000 mile system, and we've improved 1,100 bridges. That is a tremendous accomplishment. But the most important thing, and the thing that the governor really wanted to accomplish when he worked with the General Assembly to pass that program, was it created jobs. And based on our calculations, we believe that that has helped to create or retain 160,000 good paying construction and construction related jobs. On the transit and rail side, we have $2 billion that we're investing in our transit system statewide. $1.8 billion is being invested in the RTA region. Uh, I think some of the things that we're spending money on through the RTA system is going to benefit the area here. Uh, so it's a $585 million commitment to build new uh, cars for the Metro Electric District trains. Um, some of those cars are now in service. Those cars are actually being built in Rochelle, Illinois at a plant um, that Nippon Shario owns, but we have 250 Illinoisans hard at work in Rochelle building those cars and the cars for our high-speed rail project as well. On the airport side, we have invested almost $400 million in 366 different projects. And those projects are making a difference for some of our smaller airports, but also for our larger airports, which are cargo airports. We have three main cargo airports right now here in Illinois. One is um, Rockford International, um, Chicago Rockford International, O'Hare obviously, and then down in Peoria where Caterpillar is headquartered. Um, they also have a significant cargo uh, program down there. And those three airports provide the most of the cargo through our airports. And so we're hoping now with what we got passed last week that the South Suburban Airport can become part of that uh, air cargo system. And it only makes sense if you start looking at uh, the intermodal facilities in that area and all of the development that's going on around those that we have a cargo facility in this part of the state to provide those types of services. <coughs> I want to talk a little bit about the, the investments that we're making directly into Joliet. This fiscal year, we are investing close to $30 million in highway and bridge projects in Joliet. In the multi-year program that we announced um, back in April, um, we provide for another $33 million that is programmed for the upcoming fiscal year, which starts July 1st. That's just directly here in Joliet. And then almost $160 million for the entire term of the multi-year program is programmed for Joliet. And uh, that time period is from fiscal year 14, which starts July 1st, through fiscal year 19. Projects included are adding lanes and reconstruction of the Lincoln Highway, or US Route 30, from Division Street to north of I-55. And that, again, start, is in 2014. And we're also going to be investing in construction engineering to continue to make upgrades and improvements to the movable bridges here in Joliet. In the period between fiscal year 15 and 19, we will also be fixing the interchange and related roads at I-55 and Weber Road. I wanted to say that on behalf of Representative Manley, she's extremely interested in that, and we're working together to try to make that happen as quickly as possible. We are also assisting with the investment of almost $700,000, or excuse me, $700 million in the Joliet, no, it's $700,000 in the Joliet Regional Airport. No, I'm not building a new Joliet Regional Airport. So $700,000. And actually, I landed there today. Um, we came in, we came in on the helicopter, and I landed there today, and I saw this project is underway. They're going to be reconstructing the taxiway pavements, and they're preparing a drainage analysis at that airport, too. And I can tell you that that project is well underway, and there's not much of those taxiways um, to land on right now. We're also making progress on the $50 million Joliet Regional Multimodal Transportation Center in downtown Joliet. And this is a partnership. This is what I think is really important. Um, this is going to be our model going forward. This is a partnership between IDOT, the City of Joliet, and the Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railroad. 
And without all three of those partners contributing to this project, this project probably wouldn't have happened in the time frame it's happening. So we're, we're excited about what's going on there. And I have to tell you, when I first um, stepped into this role, we were having a DBE, Disadvantaged Business Enterprise event at Joliet Junior College to make some of the disadvantaged businesses in the area aware of the opportunities that would be associated with that particular building project. And I'm, I'm happy to report that that project has a 28% disadvantaged business enterprise goal and that we're going to meet or exceed that goal. And I bring that up because it's so important for us as a Department of Transportation to see all of the businesses that can compete for work with the department be successful. Because the bigger pool of con contractors and consultants that are our partners, I think the better deal we get for the taxpayers of Illinois. So uh, that, that project, I think, is, is an example of what we can accomplish when we work together with the business community. In Will County, we are investing almost $700 million for highway and bridge projects during the multi-year program between fiscal year 14 and 19, and almost $16 million for improvements at existing airports. And we will complete the multimodal center and continue to provide Metro with the funding for their new electric district rail cars that I mentioned. We're also making investments in CREATE, which is uh, a program around the Chicagoland area to improve the movement of freight rail and also passenger and commuter rail through the region. And the reason I bring that up, even though we're not making direct investments here, uh, that will have an impact on things that are going on here in terms of making uh, those movements a lot more free. And I think it's going to really be highlighted at that multimodal transport transportation center in the downtown area because you're going to have high-speed trains coming through there um, on, on the route between Chicago and St. Louis and you're going to have uh, of course the metro car or the metro trains coming through there and the other thing I didn't mention about transit earlier is transit is that critical link um, in our urban areas to jobs for many people and um, I think what's happening at the um, transportation center downtown is going to be an example of how that can help connect people to jobs they might not have had access to in the past. So those are very important things. These are all huge investments that we're making in the region. But I also have to tell you there are two significant projects that are going on here that aren't even included in all of those numbers. And I'm talking about, of course, the Ileana Expressway and now the South Suburban Airport. And I'm going to give you an update now on what's going on with the Ileana Expressway first. Um, we are in the process of working with our partners at Indiana DOT and the Indiana Governor, and we're going to be hosting uh, the vendor forum. It's an industry forum that we're having June 24th and 25th at Rosemont. And what we're doing there is we're going to be meeting with the public-private partnership community of providers. And we're going to be learning from them and finding out what they think is the best path, best path forward for that project and how we can start that project. And the reason that I'm really excited about that event because it really kicks off our whole process. We issued an RFI last week, a request for information last week, so that we can start having these conversations with that community and really understanding what we can do to make that work and work quickly for us so that we can begin that improvement on, on a very tight timeline. Shortly after this vendor conference in June, we're going to be issuing a request for qualifications. We're anticipating that's going to go out sometime in July. And that's really the first salvo out there for the industry to submit to us what their qualifications are. And based off of that and our review of that, we're going to shortlist um, the potential public-private partners out there that are going to help us to build that project. Um, once we get through that, uh, we will then be issuing a draft RFP. And then we will finalize that RFP after we get a record of decision um, for the Tier 2 process, which we anticipate will happen early next year. Um, we're hopeful that'll ha late, happen later this year. We don't want to commit to that, so we're saying early next year. Once we get that, we get that final RFP out there, we're going to evaluate that, we're going to make a selection. And what I have tasked our staff with, and, I, and, I, and the Indiana um, Commissioner of Transportation agrees, we want a financial close by sem September of 2014 on that particular project, which means that we could start construction on that project shortly thereafter. 
And so we're very, very excited about this very first step in this process. So we've been a long road to this point, but now we can really see the prize at the end of it, at the end of the game. And so we're very excited about what's happening in the Atlanta Expressway project. And I keep looking over here at my Region One engineer, John Portman, because the pressure's on, John. You got to get this done. Um, so, so that in and of itself is a significant improvement in the region. You know, we're talking about a project that's a uh, billion, billion and a half dollars. We, we don't have um, detailed cost estimates just yet, but it's between that billion, billion and a half figure. And so that's a huge investment in Will County and this part of the state. But on top of that now, because of the work, and I really, really want to tell you um, how lucky you all are to have the leadership that you have in Springfield. Um, without the hard work and dedication of some people that are here with us and some other people that aren't here with us, um, I wouldn't be able to stand up here and talk about the South Suburban Airport and what we're going to be doing to get that project moving forward in a timely fashion. So I really want to give a shout out um, to the folks that are here today. First of all, Representative Larry Walsh Jr. Um, I can tell you that him and Representative Manning, they, they took the ball, they carried it, um, they, they worked with their downstate partners um, very hard. I was in a meeting with the downstate members at the meeting that they called to make sure that they understood the importance of this project, not only for this region, but for also for the state of Illinois. Um, I also want to call out um, Senator Bertino Tarrant, she was a tremendous help in getting this effort moving forward. Um, Senator Toy Hutchinson, who's not here, she took the lead on this in the Senate for us, uh, along with Senator McGuire. We had Senator Michael Hastings and Senator Napoleon Harris. And, and I know I'm going to miss somebody, and I don't want to. So we also have Representative Al Riley, Will Davis, um, Anthony DeLuca, Kate Clunan. And I can tell you, Kate was really important in this. Um, Kate was in a lot of the meetings as well. Um, Emily McCasey, uh, Representative L.G. Sims, and Representative Thaddeus Jones. If it wouldn't have been for the hard work and the dedication of them the last week of session to really work on this project, to push it through, we might not be standing here today talking about how excited I am about the South Suburban Airport. I also want to point out that your county executive, Larry Walsh Sr., was absolutely instrumental in getting the bill passed that allows the Department of Transportation to enter into a public-private partnership arrangement so that that airport can be built. Um, and I, you know, Larry was a strong leader in Springfield last week. Um, there was a lot of heavy lifting that needed to be done and it wouldn't have happened without the hard work of these people. And I really think we ought to recognize them for what they did. <laughs> Let me tell you a little bit about the bill that passed. So part of that bill, requires that the Department of Transportation work closely with the communities that are going to be in and around the South Suburban Airport and the communities that will be impacted. And we want to make sure that what we're doing is going to have a positive economic benefit for all of those communities. And so what we're getting ready to embark upon, and with the help of John Grueling, we are going to be setting up meetings with the communities um, they're going to be smaller scale meetings. We're going to try to be more one-on-one -on -one instead of one large group meeting. Because we really want to understand what the community needs are and what we can do to help address what those needs are. And, I, and so it's, it's really important for us to stay engaged with organizations like the Chamber and then also at the community level with, with your government officials to make sure that as this project goes forward and it is going forward, um, that we're doing so in a way that's sensitive and will help you uh, meet your needs and help grow the economy in their region. I have to tell you, um, also on the South Suburban Airport, we have been making progress on the technical side of getting this in a position so that now we have this legislation, we can actually move forward with it. So we have submitted every single chapter of the airport master plan to the Federal Aviation Administration. So the ball's kind of in their court now. So they've got to review what we've submitted as the master plan, and then they're in charge of the Tier 2 environmental impact statement and hopefully getting a record of decision. Based on our timelines that we have internally, we're hoping to get that record of decision sometime in 2014, maybe early 2015. If we're able to do that now, 
we would be able to start um, the public-private partnership process that I just described for you that we're using on the Ileana Expressway. We'll be able to start that process in the next few months for the South Suburban Airport. And in fact, um, the Department of Transportation has retained um, a, a group of people that are advising us on public-private partnerships beyond the Ileana Expressway, and I meet with them for the first time tomorrow and one of the projects that I'm going to give them to, to do a feasibility on and take a really close look at will be the South Suburban Airport. So we're very excited. We, want, we don't want the ink to dry. We want to get the ground running, and that's exactly what we're going to do on that particular project. I have to mention also, as part of the legislation that passed, um, and this was kind of a controversial piece, and some of you may or may not like this, but it included in that legislation, it gives the Department of Transportation quick take powers for that inaugural footprint. Now, in case you don't know, there are about 152 parcels, or 159 parcels maybe in that inaugural footprint. Um, and that inaugural footprint had to be well-defined, and so a map of the footprint was actually registered with the Secretary of State, and um, they used the reference number for that to say that is what our quick take powers are limited to. Um, but it's really important. We have 73 parcels left to purchase for that inaugural footprint, and we've got the um, resources through appropriations this last General Assembly too, to finish those purchases. But quick take, we don't use quick take unless we're within one year of construction. So we will do everything we can to negotiate a good settlement with the people that are going to be impacted, those remaining 73 persons. We're going to try to negotiate with them. Hopefully we can come to an agreeable resolution. Um, but if we're within one year of the airport going forward and we have some properties that are still outstanding, we can file for quick take under the Condemnation Act. And what that allows us to do is to go to court um, and to be able to take ownership of the property, but the property owners retain some rights as part of that. So the property owners will get to get a preliminary just compensation when we first go to court. And that means they're going to receive an amount of money that's equal to our appraisals, which we have to, by law, base our offers on. And then that property owner, even though then title would transfer, they still have the right to go through a jury trial to present their own evidence, to present their own appraisals, to get a final just compensation amount. And so I think that it's sensitive to the property owners. And again, it's, it's, a, it's a last resort for the department. We're hoping to work through this, um, and through the negotiations process. And I can tell you on our highway projects, which we have quick take authority on, usually it's about 10 to 15% of the properties are what we end up having to use our quick take authority to do in order to get the projects built. So I don't anticipate that it's gonna be a large amount and I'm really looking forward in, into working closely with the people that are impacted to try to minimize the impact um, but really move forward with this project that I think is going to have a significant economic benefit to this region and to the state of Illinois. So um, we're very, again, I keep using the word excited, but I, I really truly am excited about this. Um, we're looking forward to trying to bring additional investments into this region of the state because this region of the state is so important, I think, to the state's economic future. And it's really important, and I know the governor feels this way as well. Um, and by the way, I failed to mention, and I probably shouldn't fail to mention this, Governor Quinn was really the one who made, who came up with the idea, hey, let's try the public-private partnership thing for IDOT and see if we can get this to build this airport. When I first took my job, um, when he asked me to take this job back in um, 2011, um, the very first thing he said to me is, he's, we gotta build that South Suburban Airport. He's been engaged in this, and he's very committed to this. He wants to make sure we're bringing economic opportunities to this region, and I'm proud to serve him, and I'm proud to be able to work on his behalf to make this happen. So, that said, that is everything that, um, in, a, in a kind of a tight nutshell, and I'm happy to answer any questions, but that's, that's a lot that's going on in, for this region, and I'm, I'm so pleased to be here today to talk to you about it, because I know many of you might have some questions about that, and I want to do the best I can to answer those questions, but really, it's an honor to be here today. Um, I, continue to, I look forward to our continued working relationship with the Chamber, and also with your officials locally elected here, and uh, let's, let's keep Joliet moving forward. Thank you.